Hey everyone, thanks so much for tuning in. In today's video, we're going to take a look at a new model from custom knife maker Sergei Rogovitz of Extreme Addiction. He is a knife maker based out of um, New York, I believe. And he has been very, very generous um, and allowed me to uh, borrow these ones for what has turned into kind of a long-term loan here. Um, so we're going to go through this. This is more of a showcase of the new model, more so than a review or overview. But if you've been on my channel for a while, um, Sergey Rogovitz is certainly no stranger to the channel. Um, he let me borrow um, a model called Object 113 or 113, uh, who knows, maybe a year ago now. And as a result, I ended up picking up his new model at the time, which was the model... 17. Uh, this one is number one, 1701 here. And love his work. Um, I think he is definitely underrated as, as a custom knife maker. So really excited to check out his new model. And again, this is the this was the first prototype. Uh, this was the working prototype. Um, so we have kind of an evolution here as he went from one to the other. Um, and then there will be a few slight changes here on on this one even, uh, going into the, I guess, the normal run or, um, you know, the knives as a whole. So, anyways, um, we'll kind of do specs, overall impressions, details to an extent, um, mostly just kind of looking at the knives. All right, so Sergey, um, and I've talked about this in other videos, but he is primarily, well, 50% of the time, he's actually a jewelry maker, I think a second generation jewelry maker. Um, and the other 50% of the time he works on knives in his basement. Everything is hand done, which is mind-boggling when you look at the quality of his work. He does his own heat treat. Um, he has no CNC. The only piece of tech that he has is what does the laser engravings on the handles, you know, such as on uh, my Model 17 here. So, um, yeah, this is the Model FMJ. He said it was kind of inspired by uh, Strider knives. It was kind of his take on a Strider knife. And, yeah, Sergey really is, he's not a jack of all trades. He's more of a master of all trades. Um, his photography is phenomenal. So if you're not following him on Instagram, I would definitely follow him there. Um, the, the fit and the finish is exceptional on his work. I think he has a great eye for design. And... You know, the other cool thing, too, is that his books are open. So um, when I did the last video on the Model 17 here, at the time he was not taking orders for, uh, we'll call them the more basic builds. The only orders he was taking directly from individuals was for, like, full Timascus or Mokutai handles with Damas steel and just these absurd, crazy builds. Um, now he's actually going to be taking orders um, from individuals on a limited basis for kind of more basic builds. And his entry point is right around kind of a thousand bucks, depending on what you get. So, I mean, if, you know, again, if, if you've been looking for a custom knife from a custom maker at, I don't want to use the term reasonable, but without paying secondary market prices um, and getting exceptional fit and finish, um, I think he's someone to definitely check out. Um, or just follow him on Instagram to look at his photography and his builds. One of the builds he's working on right now um, really does showcase his ability as a jeweler. It's got like diamonds and gold and, you know, like a hand carved eagle. I mean, it's just absolutely insane. Um, it will be beyond expensive but he's he's been working on it for four months off and on so a lot of time a lot of expensive materials uh, again really cool piece check it out on his instagram i think it showcases his skill as a jeweler and a knife maker he's also going to start doing wallets soon and jewelry and um, one cool thing that he actually made me is this top now i'm not much of a top guy um, but i can certainly appreciate good craftsmanship um, and it, it actually spins and it's balanced really well. So again, he's not a jack of all trades. He's kind of more of a master of all trades. So without further ado in that long intro, let's take a look at the FMJ here. So we'll start with the initial prototype. Um, beautiful Damascus blade. This is uh, 3V and CTS XHP blade steel. Um, apparently it's a bear to work with. And, uh, you know, I, 
I can only imagine. Uh, those are two very tough steels. Tonto grind here on the blade, opening hole, and some of that. This was a uh, an ammo an ammo crate uh, type of finish. You know, it's got that worn green look with the yellow writing, copper back spacer. Um, the hardware is pretty large and pretty kind of in your face. It's not subtle, um, but for him, that's kind of a design element and. I, of course, like it. Stainless steel lock insert. Uh, I believe that's a copper pivot collar as well. Custom hardware. I mean, just the works. He currently, or on his old models, was using Japanese uh, Precision 440 heat-treated bearings. He's actually going to try ceramic now, which, to be honest, I, I think is an upgrade. Um, these ones are pretty smooth, but I have knives with ceramic bearings that are a tiny bit smoother. So, not a knock on his work or the knives or anything. Um, I think it's good that he's, you know, um, kind of upgrading or trying new materials in the very least. Um, he's had pretty good success with these precision Japanese bearings up to this point, though. So, yeah. Very, very smooth. Um, I think he did a great job here on the blade grind. Um, very usable, usable Tonto shape. So I've carried this one quite a bit. Um, it is just chock full of lint and other crap. Um, it's kind of dirty, but I've carried it. So um, I've certainly enjoyed this piece. And let's take a look. So when he transitioned or as he was continuing to experiment with the design, um, he actually kind of beefed it up a little bit in terms of size, which has led to some um, significant ergonomic improvements. Obviously, the contouring here on the scales is uh, even more comfortable than these flat scales. Not that these are uncomfortable by any means, but um, it was an improvement as he moved to the contoured scales here. So, um, especially in my you know large hands, this one is very comfortable. No hot spots at all. A lot of really nice detail work. Beautiful egg shell on this one. Um, he does stainless steel lock inserts. And I'm not sure the blade still on this one. It's probably 3V or 10V if I had to guess. Um, obviously kind of a an acid wash, kind of stone wash finish. And the raw titanium with a black blade is one of my favorite combos. Um, and then the polished hardware on here is just such a, a nice little differentiation. It's not wildly different in terms of the color, but it's just enough to make a pop. Um, big fan of what he did on this particular one. So, anyways, ramble as I ramble, ramble on here. Um, so let's take a look at, again, some of the differences here. Um, pretty obvious, obviously longer. He also increased the width here of the handle, which was a, a nice ergonomic improvement. He improved the chamfering here, internal, well, maybe it's just the fact that it's larger that it feels easier to disengage, but um, both are actually pretty well done. So let's, um, we'll take a look at specs here. I'm, I didn't bother measuring beforehand. Um, I figured we might as well just do it in the video, so. The blade length is, is that probably 3.25 here on the prototype, somewhere around there. And then on the full size, looks like it's actually been moved up to about 3.5 here. So slightly larger handle length. Definitely a big change. About five inches. And on the smaller one here, let's see what it was. About 4.6 or so. I'm not sure if the width changed at all on them. Huh, 0.74. Oh, I got the pocket clip. I was like, man, that, that did not feel that big in the hand. 0 0.575. And then on this one, 
0 0.55, so uh, not too different there. But then the width here, let's take a quick peek at that. I'm trying not to scratch these, about 1.5. And this one comes in quite a bit, well, smaller, not quite a bit, but smaller, about 1.36. So, anyways, those were some of the changes that he made on the knife that, again, I think improve it. This one's super clean, and to be honest, I really like his laser work. Um, and I've never really talked about why, but when you're into knives for a long time, um, and you start to develop a sizable collection, right? You've got your users, um, you know, you've got your custom pieces, and at some point you might delve into art knives. And someday I will have, you know, um, a custom knife with custom engraving done by, you know, a master engraver. Um, I'm not there yet. I don't want to spend that type of money yet. Um, but this is kind of like my segue into carving. It's, it's something that gives the same look or feel to me personally, maybe not to you, but it's something that I'm not scared to carry. And when I do finally get that custom knife with, you know, some crazy engraving work on it, um, I'm about 99% sure it's not one that I would carry. It would just be something special in my collection um, because I have tons of other knives that I carry. So um, anyways, for me, this is kind of like a stepping stone to engraving, um, but it's not something that I'm afraid to carry. And then again, you know, as maybe as the laser work, you know, gets worn over the years. I mean, it'll probably look like this, which is not bad at all. Um, that actually might be kind of cool on this one. But, yeah. All right, pocket clips. Um, he actually contoured the pocket clip, too, to match the, uh, you know, the overall knife. Um, he also changed the, did an external lock bar relief. This one was an internal lock bar relief. Um, I don't know, different. I don't really think one's better than the other, but I like how the, you know, the pocket clips have, you know, they do match the, um, you know, flat with flat, contour with contour. One thing though, this one has a more generous uh, gap for the, you know, for your jeans, which I appreciate. Um, I, I think the larger gap is a little bit better. I don't recall this one being difficult to get in my pocket, but since we're sitting here and I'm just kind of rambling, no, works pretty damn well. Okay. Yeah, I didn't recall there being any issues and um, I just verified there are not, so. Um, yeah, I don't, maybe the contouring makes it look thinner than it actually is, who knows. Now, one thing that was kind of interesting about this one, and again, this is, you know, kind of the working prototype, not quite there yet, but I've never seen this done before, but for the stop pin in the closed position, he actually used um, a screw, a threaded screw. Um, and I've never seen that done before, and it works just fine. Um, you know, there are no problems with it. But from an aesthetic standpoint, me as a, an enthusiast or collector, whatever the hell you want to call me, I'm not sure how I feel about it. Um, you know, I'm telling myself to just get over it because it functions perfectly, but um, I don't know. I, I'm not sure that I like the exposed threads here on that particular stop pin. Uh, this big beefy one right here is, is just fine. Um, I think I think it was press fit. Um, this one kind of makes a little bit of noise. Um, he said again, these two, he's going with different uh, stop pins um, once he does make these, you know, I'm not quite sure the correct verbiage to use because they're not production knives, so I don't want to say when he goes into production with them, but um, if I do say that, hopefully you guys know what I mean. I mean, these are all handmade. Um, I mean, the customization options are essentially limitless. So, you know, again, if if you want an exceptional custom knife and you don't want to be paying, you know, secondary market prices, I think Sergey is someone to absolutely take a look at, um, especially since he's now going to be taking you know, custom orders like this one straight from customers as opposed to having to go to a dealer and then getting what you get. I mean, you know, you can really go in and specify, you know, something like this without getting too, too crazy with like full-time So, 
Um, this one, the stop pin is um, you know probably just flush between the scales there. Actually, both. There's no exposed hardware on the outside. I don't mind the exposed hardware. I mean, it's all cohesive in terms of the finish with the rest of the hardware. And again, for him, hardware is um, kind of one of the visual details that ties everything in. Um, gives it kind of a busier look, but doesn't, you know, again, it, it's I'm indifferent. So, anyways, FMJ by Sergey Rogovitz. Um, I will put the links in the description box below to, of course, his Instagram and his website. Um, he's like free... Um, he uploads like free backgrounds for your computers because again his photography uh, far exceeds my own and I, I don't know I just think he's a great guy to support he says he's good at two things one is making babies the other is making knives and I think he's got like six kids or something and he lives in New York that's that's crazy um, but again I think his knives are I think they're fantastic I think the fit and the finish is there um, I look forward to him trying the ceramic bearings to see if that gives it an even smoother feel. Um, the lockup, the, the design, the ergonomics, um, just top-notch stuff. So, um, again, my 117 here was a result of him letting me borrow one of his other knives. And, oh, it's dirty. Oh, that's good. Uh, but I, I don't know. I just couldn't, I couldn't not have one. If I had the extra funding right now, um, man... One of these would be staying here, that's for sure, possibly two, but USN show is coming up, man, um, like a week and two days from today. So, yeah, that is going to leave me in the poorhouse as well. Anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching. Um, again, hopefully you enjoyed taking a look at uh, some additional work from Sergey Rogovitz here, and... Again, I would invite you to just check him out on Instagram to see what he's working on and, you know, follow his work. So, thanks so much for watching. More videos to come. See ya.